Ever run out of groceries in the truck after a day of driving? Or perhaps you're just itching for a change of scenery, like catching a movie instead of staring at the bunk night after night. In areas without public transport and not wanting to rent a car for quick errands, can you use your semi-truck? Yes, it's called personal conveyance, but there are some rules. I'm Kelly Bloom, the Compliance Manager at Anderson Trucking Service. I'll explain what personal conveyance is and how it varies between carriers. You'll also learn about FMCSA guidance, giving you the confidence to discuss your company's policy. What is personal conveyance? Personal conveyance means using a commercial motor vehicle, CMV, for personal purposes while in an off-duty status. When it comes to personal conveyance, you can't use it for work-related tasks or to move your load closer to its destination, and your action shouldn't benefit the trucking company. If personal conveyance isn't an option, you can still run errands and travel during your off-duty time, but you'd need to use a personal vehicle, rent a car, or use public transportation. FMCSA personal conveyance rule the FMCSA doesn't have a formal regulation for personal conveyance. Instead, they provide an interpretation of it in the question and answer section of section 395.8. Each company creates its policy based on how they understand the FMCSA's interpretation and how law enforcement might interpret the rule during a roadside inspection. The FMCSA does offer examples of when a CMV can be used for personal conveyance, such as traveling from lodging to a restaurant, movie theater, etc., going between the driver's terminal and their residence, traveling to a nearby location for rest after loading or unloading, moving the CMV during off-duty time at a safety official's request, transporting personal property. However, there are also instances where personal conveyance should not be used, such as trying to advance the load closer to the next stop, continuation of the trip, performing work-related duties such as fueling, maintenance, or drug testing, traveling to a carrier's terminal or home after loading or unloading. It's worth noting that before 2020, personal conveyance had to be a round trip and limited to bobtail vehicles only, but those restrictions have changed. Personal conveyance is different at every company. Each company is responsible for creating its own personal conveyance policy, which can be confusing when switching between carriers, as their policies may be different significantly. Some companies permit personal conveyance, while others don't. Since the FMCSA doesn't regulate personal conveyance, but provides only an interpretation, it's entirely up to the individual companies whether they allow it or not. Generally, all policies stipulate that personal conveyance should be reserved for personal, non-work-related tasks. However, some companies may impose restrictions such as limiting the distance you can travel or the number of personal conveyance hours allowed per day. For instance, one company might restrict personal conveyance to a local radius of up to 15 miles from your current location to avoid suspicion of load advancement. Another company may limit personal conveyance to two hours per day. Some companies might only permit personal conveyance during the 34-hour reset and not during legal breaks. Remember, policies can be strict or lenient, so always be clear on what your company permits. Personal conveyance violations. Some drivers try to misuse personal conveyance to extend their driving hours or move closer to their destination, but this can lead to violations. Your company may issue a warning if you break their policy. However, even if you're following your company's policy correctly, you could still run into trouble with the Department of Transportation DOT officer who has a different interpretation of personal conveyance. Be aware that a new violation for improper use of personal conveyance was introduced in late August 2021, and as of mid-2023, roadside inspectors have already issued 17,000 citations for drivers violating this rule. If you receive this violation, it comes with seven Compliance Safety and Accountability CSA points, 
which is the same as what you would get if for falsifying a log or violating your hours of service. It's up to the drivers to understand and follow these rules to stay compliant with safety regulations. Explore other strategies for making the most of your hours of service linked in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Give the video a like and subscribe to our channel for more weekly truck driving videos. We'll see you in the next one.